My name is Emily and I do historical costuming. Welcome to my channel. Today we are continuing the 18th century Italian gown project by creating an essential foundational garment, the bum pad. Just as stays provide the right shape for the torso, the bum pad provides the right shape for the rear end. First appearing in the 1770s, they came in many shapes and sizes, but were essentially a pillow or pad attached to the rear by tying around the waist. They were most commonly stuffed with ground cork, but we do also see some stuffed with down feathers. I'll be using cotton fill pulled from an old pillow. The type I'm making is called a split rump. It splits down the center, creating a nice valley for the back of the skirts to lay in, suggestively mimicking the curves of an actual rear end. I'm following the guidance provided in the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking, which I will link in the description below. This is a wonderful resource for the beginner 18th century seamstress, and I will be referencing it throughout the Italian gown project. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I release a new video. Also, the first part of this video details the calculations I did to determine how large I needed my bum pad to be. If you're not into all that and just want to skip ahead to the sewing, I've included a link for you below. The first thing I need to do is figure out how big I need my pattern pieces to be or how much I need my false rump to increase the size of my real rump. The American Duchess book provides a really nice formula to help in that regard. That formula is your waist measurement multiplied by two minus your hip measurement. And that gives you what I'm gonna call HA or your hip adjustment or hip increase. Now, if I plug my measurements into this formula, what I get is 31 times two minus 42, and that puts me at 20 inches. So my false rump needs to increase the size of my real rump by 20 inches, and in the end, I should be left with a hip measurement of 62 inches. So the next thing I need to figure out is for the pattern pieces that American Duchess provides, how big do I need the measurements to be? They provide each of the pattern pieces on a gridded layout so that you can size up the piece to life size, but what they don't give you is how to change that pattern piece from the size that they made it for their model into a size that will fit you. The model's waist size is 28 inches, while my waist size is 31 inches. So to get 28 to 31, I need to multiply it by 1.1. So my scale is 1.1. So for each of the measurements given in the American Duchess book, I'm just going to multiply that by 1.1 to get the correct measurement for my pattern. The top measurement of this first pattern piece here is given as five inches in the American Duchess book. So multiply by 1.1 and we get five and a half inches. Similarly, this sort of widest area of the pattern here is given as six inches. So that's going to be six and a half inches for me. There is this sort of attached skirt thingy that the pattern provides that I did calculate the dimensions for, but I actually ended up not making it, so I'm gonna skip over that part. So then the last thing that I need to calculate is the length, and I'm not gonna use my same scale of 1.1 here because I'm shorter than the model in the American Duchess book. And so since I don't know that model's exact height, I'm just going to make an estimate. The measurement provided is 13. And so I'm just gonna kind of guess and say I'm gonna do mine at 12. Using an old paper bag, I measured out the length and width and then drew out the general shape. I 
I decided to use this project as an excuse to buy new pillows, which I actually kind of regret now because the new ones that we got are definitely not as comfortable as the old ones. In the spirit of being super thrifty, I decided I was going to try to use the actual fabric from the pillowcase to make the false rump. And so I just removed all the stuffing, placed it in a bag for later, and then cut out the kind of larger smooth pieces of the pillow, ironed them, and then laid my pattern out on top of them. It was a pretty tight fit, but I made it work. I cut out the pattern pieces along my markings and then laid them out right sides together, um, which in one of them, funnily enough, was really important because there was some embroidery of the pillow brand name left and uh, I couldn't get rid of it because I didn't have enough fabric to chop off that part. So one of my bum pads has the branding of my Beauty Rest pillow. After setting up my sewing station, I simply sewed right along the outside edges of the bum pad, leaving the top part open, uh, clipped the seam allowance uh, at the corners, and flipped it inside out. Next, I pleated each bum pad so that its width would be one quarter the circumference of my waist so that both bum pads together would equal half the waist measurement. I attached one side of each bum pad to the waist tape, pinning it in place first and then stitching it down. Using the stuffing that I pulled out of my pillow earlier, I stuffed each of my bum pads. Here I had to kind of do several different rounds of stuffing it and then tying it around my waist, trying it on and seeing how it looked. When I stuffed them as full as gave me the recommended hip measurement, I really didn't like how it looked. I thought it was way too big, way too bulky, so I, ended up taking some of that stuffing back out. Hopefully it won't cause too much of a problem with the silhouette later on. I found it a bit difficult to envision how it's gonna look once there's petticoats and skirts over it. Um, but once I got it to a point of fullness that I liked, I pleated the top to match the bottom um, folded the waist tape over that and pinned it down and then just stitched it over the top. If anyone at Beauty Rest Pillows is watching this, uh, when do I get my sponsorship? <laughs> 